You're tuned in to Two is Better Than One with your host Arlene and DJ Johnny C. Now, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Two is Better Than One. Uh, this is a show that we do here on YouTube, but we are always uh, able to be listened to on other, other venues. You can catch us on Spotify, Anchor.fm, and ExtremeMixedRadio.com as well. For all the information, please check out the links on the YouTube description. With me here is the co-host of Two is Better Than One. DJ Johnny C from Club Planet B. That's right. I'm coming to you from Florida. And Johnny, where are you coming from? Long Island, New York, and the Planet Beat Studio. That's right. We start every show with a thought. The last show you heard, it was one of the thoughts from DJ Johnny C. Today, we'll be taking a thought from my book, My Thoughts, which you can find on Blurred.com. All right, Johnny. Today's thought DJ, is... My Thoughts. Let me inspire you. Take time today to give thanks to those in your life. Those who have loved you, even when you are acting unlovable. Give thanks to those who've been there for you, not only because they've done things for you, but big things for you, but even those little things. Be thankful. Be thankful. Mm -mm -mm. Big subject. Yeah. I, for the majority of my life, found myself complaining more than I was being thankful before I came to Christ Jesus. I learned my lesson later on. Were you ever a little bit more disgruntled and less thankful in your life? I still do it. And I got to catch myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't realize how well the Lord has provided for me. And then I catch myself and I say, well, the Lord has provided good for me and I should be grateful. And I thank him. But sometimes I say, well, how come I'm not in those big million dollar houses like everybody else? And, you know, when I, when I, I, I realize when I come back down is the Lord is providing a good life for me because I'm happy. Amen. So the reason I brought up being thankful is through the years and in our lives, we hear, I watch a lot of entertainment news. You will hear about, you know, having gratitude, being thankful. We know years ago, I'm not going to say who it was. It was a talk show host that was famous that always talked about doing a, a, a Thanksgiving kind of a journal, being thankful and grateful every day. Awesome words. But you know what? It didn't come from us or from that talk show person. It's something that the Bible says we need to do. We need to be joyful at all times and thankful because the truth is we are breathing today. And when all that's been going on in this world and still is going on, some of us have been able to understand that a little better, being thankful that we are still breathing, being thankful, being thankful. So today we want to talk more and it's a harder topic to talk about because it's easier for me to find something to complain about or maybe to share some experience that was negative to turn into a positive. Do we really ask ourselves, what are we really thankful for? Johnny, what are three things that you are thankful for? I thought you were going to say, what have I been complaining about? The place that I live, um, the job that I have, and I would have to say all that the Lord has given me. Johnny, before I say mine, I'm going to tell you that you are thankful for the job you have. But isn't that one of the things that sometimes you complain the most about? So how did you turn that into Thanksgiving? Well, it's kind of like a uh, double standard. I'm grateful that the Lord gave me this job that I'm on my 27th year in. But at the same point, that's how the devil comes at me through people at work. And I could see it a mile away. It's. It's just so evident and so right out there in front of me. Um, it's literally laughable because my eyes were open years ago. So it's kind of a double standard. And, um, you know, I, I have to come back to reality and say, you know, if it wasn't for the Lord, like, where would I be? I mean, yeah, I could say, well, I may be in a better place with a, making more money, a better job, but 
I have a good job, and it's only because of him, you know, that my life went the way it did. So, Johnny, what you're doing is you're refocusing it. And because you're wiser now, it happens to me too, you kind of catch yourself and you counteract it with thankfulness. So we're telling you that can be done and it can change everything about that one day that you might not be having that you are being ungrateful or focusing on the negative. I too will work every day here from home and I'll find myself going, oh my God, this day is just dragging, you know, or getting upset about whatever conversation I had on the phone with a rude person that I was trying to obtain, you know, whatever documents I needed from. But you know what kicks in? I go, and I am so grateful to be working from home. And I am so grateful that I prayed so long for a job from home and here I am. And I am so grateful that I can work in my pajamas if I want to. I am so grateful I don't have to take a train. I am so grateful. And that counteracts all that. And sometimes we have to do that a little bit more times a week. It's not easy. I think that when we immerse ourselves in our complaining, um, we never see the light of day. We can never find the positive out of it. We get robbed off really potentially our joy because God says that the joy of the Lord is there ever present and it's only found in him. So when we focus on our griping, we become unhappy people, sad people, mad people, negative people. But when we focus on, even if it's just that you're getting a paycheck, and that paycheck really helps you. If we focus on that, we learn to be more grateful because there's so many people right now that still don't have work and they're too sick to work. Some that um, that just going through a whole lot of other things that we couldn't even imagine. So today, even if you have a little, be grateful for the little that you do have, because I can assure you that I've been through things and Johnny's been through things in which we had struggled and had to rise above the rubble. Correct, Johnny, in life? Absolutely. You should turn to the Lord when things are going really good and thank him and be grateful. And you should turn to the Lord when things are bad and not going the way that you want them to go when you're you're upset or you're hurt or you're depressed. You know, um, you should always have him in your life and thank him. That's very important. That is very, very important. You know, Johnny, I've heard a lot of stories that have been, you know, very serious nature. For one, let's say someone gets in their vehicle, they're on their way to work, and now they either have a detour because of unknown reasons, or they literally have a prompting not to go one way and from the Lord, or don't know what the prompting is, and they need to go a different way. Yet to find out later that there was a major multiple accident ahead of them that they didn't know that was prevented because they listened to that prompting. Some not understanding that that prompting came from the Lord. And some of us, even in the Lord, may not pay attention because we want to get there because we're supposed to be there at a certain time. And I've learned about that because I used to have anxiety, literal anxiety about getting to work every day in New York at the time I'm supposed to be there because I don't want to be fired, right? But it got so bad in New York with the traffic and I would take either uh, the express bus or the train in the express bus and I had no control of what was going to happen on that train, no matter how early I got up, five o'clock in the morning. I had no control about the traffic that might or might not happen at that moment, even though I gave myself due time. So, Johnny, I tell you one thing I did. I stopped wearing a watch. <laughs> Johnny, I didn't have cell phones back then. I stopped wearing a watch because I was so obsessed with trying to control something that I had no control of that it was get, giving me anxiety physical anxiety. So I had to literally go to my boss and say, I cannot get up any earlier than I get up. I live all the way in the Bronx. This is Manhattan. I know some employees don't go for that, but what can you do? Sleep in your job? You get what I'm saying. There will be times that there are things that are out of our control and we have to be thankful that we have enough sense to understand that there are things that we can do and there are things that we cannot do. You know what I'm saying, Johnny? Well, I try to. Sometimes my impatience, you know, I'll talk to myself because I'm in my car all the time, myself going to work. And, you know, I'll be like, you got to be freaking kidding me. You know, there could be a, a, a traffic light down or they're working on a road and now it's going to take me a few more minutes to 
you know, because I like to get there early, like you said, and be on time. I have to leave at a certain time. And, you know, that's just me because I like things to be as perfect as I could get them in my life. And, you know, we had this talk on the last show about you want things to go a certain way, but sometimes they don't. Life isn't fair sometimes, but, you know, I can't. You're right. You shouldn't get stressed out over stupid things like that. And you should be grateful that you're breathing, that you can walk, that you're driving a car, that you're going to work. And these are the things that slip my mind sometimes. And here I am in my car blowing steam off because somebody cut me off or I got to jam on my brakes to catch the light because if I go through it, I'll get a ticket. You know, those those red light tickets. Well, Johnny, that means that you're going to have to start working on this little at a time because it's not easy, Johnny. It's not easy. But we need to be thankful because sometimes oh. life has interruptions for good reason. Better than we understand. God will put a pause on something in our lives or pauses or stop us at a certain place just because there's something ahead that we don't know about. God is in control if we let him be in control. Let me say something to you that you didn't know this. But as you know, I had surgery, unexpected emergency surgery. I have a surgery and I know nothing about short term disability. So now all of a sudden I have papers to fill out. OK, I have proof I was in the hospital. I have proof when I went to the doctor to follow up. And now I hear that just because I was maybe two to three days earlier to go back to work, I'm not getting any pay for those days. So, Johnny, check that out. Check that out. I was being an honest worker and said, hey, I'm working from home. I went to see the doctor. I'll work half day, you know, on those next two days. And Monday, I'm going to hit it full steam, which was this Monday, and just work, right? Shouldn't they be happy that I'm to work? Do you know that if I would have stood longer, I would have gotten paid? That's enough to get anybody angry because sometimes you try to do the right thing and still and be great. Instead of them being grateful, other people, they just kick you in the behind for doing something right. So in this case, I still have to be thankful that I have a job and that now I know better and I learned something. So I took a holiday day. Yeah, I don't have to go to work on Monday because I found out that I have holidays that are on the calendar and therefore I get paid for them. And I had a choice. Do you want to come into work or get a paid holiday? Oh, I'm not coming to work. I'm getting a paid holiday. Good for you. Because, you know, you have to be thankful. And when you find the opportunity that you can grab what is rightfully yours, then you go for it, you know, because now you were with a grateful heart and something opened up. So am I thankful that they're not paying me? No, but I'm thankful that I have a paper. I can dispute it. And I will. I will dispute it because they did not divulge that information because it's easier for them to have me at work, of course, than to pay me and me not be at work, right? So there was a stipulation. So still, what do we do? Be thankful. Be thankful that we're alive. Be thankful that I'm in the mend and that I'm that I'm healing. Be thankful that before God, we still did the right thing and we had the right intentions, even if someone else did not reciprocate and do honor those intentions. And that's hard, Johnny, because you can work your butt off at work and you know this. And still your bosses won't be grateful. For all the hardness, all the hard work, and all the dedication, and all the, the being flexible to be at the job, and still, they will not be thankful for you. But you have to be thankful for the job, and so do I, because there are many others that don't. And I say to those that don't, be thankful that you have this time so that you can seek the Lord on what to do next. Because during the pandemic, my friend was working in a really great paying job, nice position in New York City. And of course, they had to start working from home. When he started working from home, something just hit him. And he started realizing that he had so much experience that it was the time for him to start his own company. So he started his own one man company doing the same thing he was doing for someone else. But now he's his own boss. The company is probably a year old and because 
he didn't do anything to try. He would never go get somebody else's people, customers, whatever. People started flocking to him because he went to work every day grateful. He went to work and he did his job and they liked him so much that they still want him to do the job that he was doing for them with the other company. But instead, now they came over to his company because he had a grateful, thankful attitude. And he took that time that was given to him and given to many to start thinking, praying and wondering, am I supposed to be doing something else? And am I too afraid to take that chance? Well, he wasn't. And now he has his own hours, his own company. He took a bad situation and he turned it around because every day he went to work thankful and grateful. He's, he's not a man of faith to, to the degree that some may say is faith, but he knew, but he knew. He knew that it was time for that change. So today we want to just keep telling you this because it's such a word that's used loosely. But if we were asked right now to say three things, it's not always easy to write down or say the things we're thankful, but it's a lot easier for me to tell you all the complaints I have, all the doubts I have, and all the worries I have. And maybe it's like that for you. What three things am I grateful for? I am grateful that I am alive, that I am breathing today because every day is a gift from God. I am grateful, number two, for my husband, number two. And number three, I am grateful for my family, my mother and father that did, and my sister, that they did the best that they can do for me and instilled, while not such good things, they also instilled some great things. So those are the three things I am grateful for. And I'm sure that if you guys would start doing that, your whole demeanor would change, even if it was just to write it down, type it up in a computer, because now you can remember that every time things get rough, focus on what good stuff has happened in your life. Focus on the goodness of God. If you have children and you're having a problem right now with them because they're in their teenage years, we all have gone, been teenagers, and some of us, like myself, haven't always been the best teenager. And as a result, you are having a hard time. Turn them over to God and know that you have to trust that God, God can do what you cannot do. Trust that he can do what you cannot do and be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. Do you have anything to say about thankfulness? Because I know you have a lot to say about complaining like me. Oh. This, this is about being thankful. All right, let me throw this one at you. Tell me, we got some minutes left. Tell me something that you, you another scenario that you were ungrateful for for a minute. You might've had a lot of pain about it and anger. And then all of a sudden time passes, years passes. And now you're like, so thankful. I'd say work. So that's been a really heavy one in your life where you had might have said well, things weren't always good. And right. I complained a lot to other coworkers at break time <laughs> or lunchtime. And you know what, what I, what I really came to realize was I'm lucky that I'm not working outside when it's 10 degrees out with a jackhammer in my hand, like some other people that I see doing it. Mm, yeah. And I, I have realized that, you know what, I need to be more grateful. And my biggest problem in my whole life, even today, has been, um, I would have to say, impatience. And sometimes impatience can lead me to not think the right way. And then um, as soon as I logically think about something, my heart kicks in and my logic and my my true of who I am comes into play. And then I really do think things in a in a good, logical manner. But sometimes at the spur of the moment, I may not think like that, you know, and. Um, so then basically, you, I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit has let you know, hey, 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 Johnny. And he refocuses you. Oh, absolutely. I believe we all have a guardian angel. I really do. I truly I believe. Well, the Bible says we do. We do. We do. I, I truly believe that. And you mentioned something about when you were on the train and yeah. other things. There was uh, last year, there was a light. And this has happened to all of us. And it's happened more than once. But for some reason, I remember this one more than anything. And the light turned green. And for some reason, I didn't just gun it and go. 
Mm. I waited a minute and here came a truck, a big oh, truck, God. went right through the red light. Had I have stepped on the gas, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you. Mm. And, and, you know, I told you, my aunt, uh, that's not luck. Nope. There's a lot of people that I hear say all the time, oh, I was lucky. You know what luck is? Luck is buying a scratch off and winning a hundred bucks on it. Yes, yes, luck yes. is not seeing the Lord do things in your life that only he could do. Seriously, and your eyes have to be open for that. You know what it is? Luck to me, this is my interpretation, can be found by, act. Uh, it's more reckless. That's what I want to say, reckless, in my opinion, because it's a can be or might, might be or may not be. But when we trust in the Lord, there is an assurance. There is a yes and a no. God is not into gray areas. He is not. A, he's a yay and a nay. He's not into maybes. There is no maybes with God. So as individuals, as, as human beings, we're not robots. We understand what we're trying to tell you is. Uh, we're not telling you not to have emotion, not to feel these things you feel. I feel them. We all feel them. It's a natural thing. It's when we allow these emotions, this impatience, this, this anger, this sensitivity, this, this stuff that's in our way, these stumbling blocks to become things that paralyze us and we focus only on them. That's when we can't be thankful. There's a lot of things that hurt us on a day-to-day -day basis, month to month. We love our parents, they're aging, things are happening that are out of our control. We concern ourselves about them, you know, but we need to focus on the Lord, knowing that the Lord loves them more than he loves, than we can ever love them. And that we can do the best we can for those that we love, trust in him and continue to be grateful that they are in our lives and that just like ourselves, we one day won't be here neither. So if we put our energies more in being grateful for the things we have, even if they're little things versus the things we don't have, then we can live our lives in a more peaceful manner. Not everybody is going to be rich. We know this. Not everybody is going to have the success that they believed they want to have. But we learn to refocus and how we define the word success. Johnny, you are successful. I am successful. A person that has a wonderful job that they work for years is successful. A mother that stays at home and rears these children and doesn't work and somebody else works in the house for them and she works in the house, she's successful. You know, there's different levels and definition of success. So instead of focusing on what we don't have, let's thank the Lord for the things we do have because he is great and he is worthy to be praised and to be thanked. How could you not throw yourself at the feet of the Lord and thank him when he tells us he loves every hair on our head? Our, yeah. own, par our own parents never told us that. <laughs> no. Think about that. Like, tell me that's not a verse or a psalm or whatever it's called in the Bible. I guess it would be a psalm, right? A reading, a psalm, where the Lord says it. Every hair on our head is counted. I'm going to look it up while you talk. I mean, yeah. just unbelievable. That You know, little things like that, when I read them, they blow me away and they hit home. Yep. Yep. It took me a very long time. Let me look up the scripture. Every, it's every hair on our head is numbered right here. Right. I, I said counted, right, numbered. No, it's not counted. That was the biggest revelation for me, when there was a preaching on, I'm going to read it for you now. And even at, uh, the very hairs of your head are numbered. That blew me away, Johnny, when I heard that sermon, like, I don't know, maybe 29 years ago. You know why? Because when something is counted, you and I both know this, it's counted and therefore, um, it's got a, one full number, one whole number, whatever it is, it's counted, it's counted. But the word numbered is specific. When, when God puts a number on each, let's say, for, for instance, follicle of our head, that's how detailed God is and how invested God is in every part of our lives, every part. So there's nothing so minute 
to God that isn't important to him when it comes to his creation and his children. And that's why that blows you away, that scripture, because the number, John, he does he could have said, oh, they're counted. They're counted. One, two, three. No, numbered. This is one. This is two. This is three. That's Johnny. That's Johnny's three. That's Johnny's four. You know, you know what I'm saying? I know, but think about it. Your parents have shown you love. Your parents have told you you love them. Your husband yes. tells you you love them. Your wife tells you she loves you or you tell her. And But something like that, that's just... That's personal. That's a one-on-one -on -one with God. Yeah. That's yeah. him telling you that I got you. Like, you mean that much to me. I just hope, like, you know, the, the biggest thing in my life, I just hope that I'm worthy to stand in the presence of the Lord, to see, to be seated at the right hand of the Father when my time comes. I re that's all I hope because I am not perfect. I'm not Jesus I, I'm a sinner. I have faults, but um, I do believe in him and put him number one over all in my life. Being that I have never had children, I um, I have a different perspective maybe than another person, how they see things that have children, of course. And what I've seen is that as I get older, I see more and more without complaint the imperfections of my mother and father, right? I see their humanity. I see their story. I see their story by their actions. And because I'm a woman of God now and not a teenager and not a woman that doesn't have God, I don't take it personally anymore. You get what I mean? I, I'm not saying that abuse is something that I condone. I'm not saying other things that are horrendous coming from parents that you know are, 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 are condoned. I'm saying that I have a different perception about their humanity than I did before. And what I mean is my father was a verbally, not physically, verbally abusive man. And as a result, there was a lot of pain and repercussions and things I didn't deserve in the manner in which I was spoken to. But I am thankful, I know that sounds not to many people, that I have God and I have my father because now I do see the goodness that was in my father that he did deposit in me. And I don't focus so much anymore on the horrible things because there were horrible things to be abused is a horrendous thing in any aspect of abuse and to be abused and be able to make it through that abuse to where I'm at now could only have happened through the power of God and the love of God. So when I see my dad with dementia now, and now we don't know what to do with him. It's going to make me cry. And we want to put him in a place where he can be helped because it's too much for my mom. My heart has been aching the whole week because if I wasn't thankful for my dad, I would be saying he deserved it. But he didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve that no matter what. I will only wish that he could have lived his life with more of his memory. But I am also thankful that when I go see him, my mom says, He's not going to remember you. And I tell her, oh, yes, he will. And every time I go with a mask on, he hasn't seen me all the time. I said, daddy, do you know who I am? He says, of course, you're my firstborn. And even though 10 minutes later, he might be questioning who I am, I am thankful for that one moment that I always have every time I see him. And instead of focusing on what he did, I am grateful to God that God showed me not to be like him. Amen. And that the way to be that was like him was to carry out the music because it was he that instilled the music in my life. It was my father through the Lord. So we're telling you that even in a bad situation, I know this can sound crazy to you, but in a bad situation, I've been there. You can be thankful for something in there. It could be thankful for the lesson you learn not to be that way. The lesson you learn, maybe not to do this or that with your children in the manner your parents might have said it or done it. And now you want to do it a different way. But I assure you that your children will still find faults in you later on and be thankful for what you did instill in them and say, well, I'm not going to do that that way because they weren't happy about certain things that you as a parent might have done. Because we are human and we have faults. Again, I'm not excusing abuse. I am telling you that I'm a, I literally came from all my life 
a verbally abusive situation till my adulthood. But it was Christ Jesus that helped me understand that I can be thankful and find the, something in my life situation that could keep me going and keep me positively living with thankfulness and with forgiveness. Amen. So in closing, what do you have to say, Johnny, about being thankful? Be grateful for everything in you that you have in your life. Thank the Lord for it. And thank the Lord that we now have Love Planet B on TikTok on Monday nights at 7 with DJ Johnny C live from New York in this studio every week. I always do it the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yes, and don't forget to tune in to Adelante with our link on YouTube where you can find all the links on my description, but also you can see Speak It Out, Sing It Loud. It's better than one. This is what this is. And you can see, let me inspire you. Let me see what I'm... Oh, and my phone. See all that here on Adelante with our lead on YouTube. But you can find me and Johnny on multiple platforms. As we do two is better than one on ExtremeMixRadio.com, which actually we are on every Sunday on that. Awesome. That's awesome. We're excited. We're on at 11 a.m. on ExtremeMixRadio.com, where you can hear me and DJ John C. And maybe some of the other audio that you have not heard. So we thank you once again. Please don't turn off because you're gonna have an awesome music master mix. DJ John C. Johnny, what do you say at the end of your show? Doesn't get better than this. Sigue adelante. Until next time. God bless you. Thank you for watching Adelante Good Garden. Sigue adelante. Don't forget to share, share, share. Share my videos.